Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you are in the world, welcome and thank you for joining us. We are live at the Scottsdale Center for the Performing Arts for the inaugural U.S. In Cabin event. My name is Carl Anthony, editor and founder of AutoVision News and a longtime partner of Sense Media, the organizers of AutoSense and In Cabin. With us today is Detlef Wilkie, Vice President of Automotive Solutions at SmartEye, the pioneer of human inside AI. At SmartEye, Detlef leads the company's development and sales of its driver monitoring and automotive interior sensing AI solutions. As chairman then of the CLEPA minor group for Euro NCAP occupant status monitoring, he was deeply involved with the NCAP and different legislative strategies. Detlef, welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me and uh, giving me the opportunity to talk with you. Truly. Yes. And some of your expertise is focused on intoxicated driving. It's been an issue for generations. So two-part question here, Detlef. What are the current prevention and detection methods? Why are they insufficient? Mm -hmm. And then can you describe the technology systems that OEMs are looking at today? Yeah. So first, I'm speaking here for the experts of my company, right? So I'm briefed. I'm into that since a while, but I do my very best. Sure. So, um, the main challenge is that we have a really high amount of uh, fatality still on the road. Yeah. So generic data shows we have 30% of the fatal crashes with an involvement of alcohol intoxication. So it right. is the next issue to address. That's why we are actually working with that. Um, the, the challenge with that really is why it hasn't penetrated the market are the cost levels and the acceptance. So today, the only, let's say, working systems are alcohol lock systems, which actually have to blow in and that prevent the car from starting. The rest is in development from us and obviously also the market or the industry, but it's still not there where it needs to be. Right. But it's coming close. That's why we actually see also push from legislators, from OEMs to go in that direction. Sure, sure. To expand on the challenges a little more, inside yeah. the cabin debt lift, what are some of the challenges, obstacles that you have when you want to detect intoxication? Okay, very good question. Um, the main challenge is it is practically invisible. So we focus on camera-based systems, sure. order technology, sure. on driver sure. monitoring, and you cannot recognize a drunken driver. You can only recognize a driver that is really heavily drunk. Sure. And if you see video examples, there's no way that from footage of people that are really far beyond legal limit, you can recognize as an observer that that person is drunk. Right. But that is a challenge uh, that needs to be overcome, and it's getting there. Yeah, I didn't. I did not. I did not realize that. Um, mm. With intoxicated driving, it, it, if we have the ability to detect it, and, and we know that it's a, a critical issue to address for road safety, what's holding everybody back from adopting it? Um, basically, it's really hard to do. Sure. So you need a lot of data. Um, yeah. The the differences, as they are invisible to the human, they are still visible to the AI. We sure. use AI best technologies at the end, right? right. Uh, but you need a lot of data. You need to get the data actually under intoxicating conditions, okay. which we do. Right. And then you need to find the small differences between a non, let's say, uh, a legally and a really drunk driver. Sure. And that is a challenge. That's why it's not there today. Sure. But we have hopes and, uh, let's say, also the convincement that the industry will push it towards implementation 25, 26 in that range, I think, uh, could enter the market. Sure. But it's not our decision, obviously. Right. Detlef, can you expand on the data collection process and the mm -hmm. challenges? And then can synthetic data be leveraged mm -hmm. at all in this context? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we believe in data under real-world conditions. Sure. So sure. the first step, what you do is normally you, uh, you get data under lab conditions, which is easy and controlled. But people behave differently if they are in a lab or if they are in an actual car. So what we do together with research partners um, in Europe and also in the US is actually put people under controlled drunk conditions yes. in live vehicles in close compartments where they drive. We have co-drivers there to keep them safe, but we really let them drive active road tracks. And that is where you get the data on the real behavior. Sure. Uh, what was the second question? Can I repeat that one? <laughs> so the second question was uh, synthetic data. Synthetic data. Can yes, synthetic absolutely. data be used? Yeah. Uh, not yet, actually. Okay. Um, but it will be because um, alcohol intoxication is a behavioral change. And yeah. synthetic data is usually um, made up by humans. So to say you need to program how synthetic data shall be have. And we use synthetic data for driver monitoring. Right. But we have the behavioral data captured. So we play back real human behavior. Sure. 
into synthetic data. And that is still to be done for the intoxication. Yeah. Detlef, one of the inspirations behind the in-cabin conference when we did AutoSense now in-cabin yeah. is the regulatory landscape, in-cap regulations, and that you know, moved us to do in cabin. How do the reg how, how does the regu regulatory landscape impact the work that you're doing with intoxication and detecting that? It is absolutely vital. Sure. Because the problem is intoxication measurement is a negative feature for the driver. So if you would be buying a car, sure. you would normally never make the check mark, so to say, on the intoxication feature. Correct. So it gets only adopted in wide range if you actually have pushes from legislators or quasi-legislators, which right. I would rate the NCAP, for instance. Sure, sure. In addition to all of the intoxication detection work, what are some other use cases that SmartEye has? What are some other success stories? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we are one of the market leaders in driver monitoring, yes. saving people's lives. That's kind of my initial goal while I was going in that direction from a professional perspective. Sure. Um, then we talk about uh, the features in the cabin. So child left behind, um, child seat detection with automatic airbag disabling. So our complete scheme is around safety. Sure. Going from safety in the past, so to say, now going for, uh, let's say, infotainment, HMI, holistic, uh, let's say, messaging to the customer because yeah. we actually know where you sit, how you sit, where you reach out. Yep. Yep. I actually yep. have the display. So that, that goes now <laughs> from safety to, um, to fun, more or less. That's the yep. part. Right. That right. you actually want to make the check mark when you buy a car for a certain package. Yeah, absolutely. Detlef, from all of us here at AutoVision News and in Cabin, we want to thank you for your time, sharing your expertise and thought leadership. Wish you safe travels home, of course. Yep, and you. when the synthetic data, when, when we get a little farther down the road, let's do an interview like this again and see where we're at. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Happy to do that. More to come from In Cabin Phoenix here on the AutoVision News LinkedIn page. From the Scottsdale Center for the Performing Arts, I'm Carl Anthony, AutoVision News. Thank you so much.